Well, a couple of issues we're going to discuss today, man, is touching flat on the disc with your cutters and going off the disc with your combs. Three teeth off the disc, we've all heard about, yep. Look, there's some massive issues out there for people blindly following what manufacturers say or what other people say without actually taking the facts on board. So if we have a look at AWI's website, well, we've got four different ways to grind shearing gear from four different manufacturers. So we've got Super Shear, we've got Lister, we've got Bay Ewan, and we've got Heinegger. And we've got four different presenters providing four different ways how to sharpen your gear. So if I go to Bunnings and buy a Ryobi, a Hitachi, a Makita drill, and an Ozito drill, that's like saying there's four different ways to drill a hole because it's a different brand of product. Doesn't make any sense to me. And I think shearers are smarter than that, yeah? So stay with me. There's only two settings you can change on a grinder. A vertical setting on your pendulum and a horizontal setting on the tree or the arm of your grinder, yep. So once again, we're gonna deal with the facts here because opinions don't sharpen shearing gear. See, so many people still to this day chasing unicorns about sharpening their shearing gear. That's why people are so easily led. If you follow simple logic that we've got on our app, you're never going to have an issue. I guarantee it. If what you're doing isn't working, then you've got to go back to the basics and go from there. If what you're doing is working, that's fine. Carry on. There's no need to change anything. Righto. So the recommendation of touching your cutters up flat to the disc. Let's talk about that. So basically, if the heel of your comb or cutter touches the plate first, well, then the heel comes off the plate last. Yeah, that's a fact. Let's look at the opposite of that. So if the tip touches the plate, comb or cutter first, then the tip comes off the plate last. Which creates a scenario where the tips of the cutter aren't going to sit on the comb flat. They're going to sit like that. We don't want to risk that tip touching first because if the tip touches on the plate first, it goes on and grinds, the tip will come off last. If the tip comes off last, it's just going to round that tip up. How easy is it for the top of that pendulum to move in on some hangers and tip them cutters? The only reason I see people are risking that and touching their cutters up flat to the disc is because they believe that their cutters are going to come down flat. Well, this is not 100% true if you understand pressure points and your pendulums. What determines whether gear grinds to the heel or the tip is 100% determined by the amount of steel above the pressure point line and below the pressure point line. That's not up for dispute, man. That's not my opinion. That's just basic physics. If we have a look at a pendulum, try grinding your cutters on the comb side. You reckon they're gonna come down to the heel? 100%. Try grinding your combs on a cutter pendulum. You reckon they're gonna to go to the tips? 100%. particular pendulum has got comb and cutter adjustments by turning it round which adjusts the pin height. On this pendulum a cutter is going to go on more to the tip than on this pendulum pretty obviously because the pressure point is closer to the tip or there's less steel above the pressure point than below it. That's why we teach people how to reface our pendulums on the app because it's not hard and you can adjust them to the type of gear you're using. And that's pretty obvious why cutters come down to the tip when they're thinner, because there's less steel above the pressure point line than below the pressure point line. When I get a new cutter, the cutter may be that long, but once that cutter's been ground down to half worn, well then the cutter 
is only this long. When it was new, it started out as that long. The cut has been ground down. Now it's half worn and it's humming. And the cut is only that long now. The pressure point from the pendulum was always in the same spot. The cutter got thinner, it started grinding more to the tips. Why? Because there's less steel above the pressure point compared to when the cutter was new. So the pressure point's closer to the tips of the cutter, therefore the cutter will go down to the tip as it gets thinner. Righto, so taking three teeth off the disc. This whole idea is based on the fact that two combs don't fit on a grinding disc. If I put two combs on a grinding disc, well then they overlap that part of the grinding paper, that part of my emery, never gets relief or never gets a rest from the comb going across the disc. So it's going to wear out faster. That's a fact. I don't deny that at all. Let's get back to the point of taking three teeth off your grinding disc. Here's, here's why I'm laughing. Are we grinding gear to save our papers or are we grinding gear to make it sharp? Yeah, let's have a look at a little analogy I've got here. Here's a steel, here's a knife, yeah? So, I'm only going to use one side of the steel instead of both sides of the steel, yeah? I'm only going to use one side of the steel so that I don't wear out my steel. <laughs> you f serious? Shearing papers are a consumable. They're like toilet paper, man. You've got to use it. It's like saying, if I don't drive my car, I'm going to save the rubber on my tyres. We're missing the whole point. The reason I'm walking into that shed is to sharpen my shearing gear, not to save my papers. If that doesn't convince you, here's the second reason why I don't go off the disc with my combs. Because when I'm teaching learners at a shearing school, if I say to them, go off the disc with three teeth, and they're novices and they're learning how to grind, the difference between three teeth and half a comb, let's face it, is f all, and they go off with half a comb, all of a sudden they're counterbalanced and they're overbalanced, and there's a chance that they can slip off the edge of that disc. Yeah, there's a safety issue there, number one. There's no way I'd encourage a learner to be taking their comb or cutter off the disc so that it gets to a point where they can slip. The next point is that if I go off the disc with my comb, it's a fact that I'm gonna step that comb out, yep. So if I hold this comb in that position on that disc for long enough, aren't I gonna end up with three teeth in my hand? Is that not a fact that I'm just going to end up with three teeth and the rest of the comb will grind away? So it has to step your comb out. And I've heard people say, oh yeah, it's not that bad, it's not that big of a step. Well, so the outside of a grinding disc, the outside of your comb paper disc is going around about 180 feet per second. So let's call that 55 metres a second if you do the sums. Let's say you grind in a bit quicker than that and you're only outside the disc for half a second. Let's say you're doing it a bit quicker than that and you're only outside the disc for quarter of a second. That's 13 metres of comb paper not hitting three teeth for quarter of a second. Oh, it doesn't mean that much, Blackie. It doesn't matter. Really? Let me drag your ass across 13 metres of comb paper in quarter of a second and tell me that that doesn't matter. But you don't have to listen to me. Lots of people don't like to listen to me because there's lots of Facebook microphone experts out there. So here's another reason why I don't go off the disc. You might want to have a listen to this bloke. He might know what he's talking about. Just before we actually grind, it's important to know that we use all the emery. Don't go off on the outside. 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 Don't go off on the outside because that can be a bit of a hazard if the emery has um, got any broken edges. 